A star-studded state memorial has been held today at the Sydney Opera House for the late, great Australian entertainment icon Barry Humphreys. The 89-year-old died in April this year following complications from surgery. King Charles paid a tribute to the life of Humphreys. I suspect that all of those who appeared on stage or on TV with Barry's Dame Edna or who found her appearing at the back of the royal box will have shared that unique sensation with fear and fun combined. Like so many, I've been deeply saddened by his passing. Life really won't be the same without him. And Rupert Murdoch also bid his farewell to the comedy legend. Barry, you will never be strangled. You will never be silenced. Your voice still echoes, your wisdom still enlightens, and your friendship still resides deeply in my heart. Sky News senior reporter Caroline Marcus joins me now. Caroline, thank you for coming on board today with me. It's great to have a friend on set. You were at uh, the memorial today. Tell us about it. Well, Gemma, it was a star-studded affair that was absolutely fit for a dame and Edna Everidge herself would have been very proud, I think, starting with a hot pink carpet, which some <laughs> 2,000 guests alighted at the Sydney Opera House to attend the state memorial service. It was a mixture of hilarious moments, beautiful music, as well as some moving speeches from dignitaries as well as Humphrey's own family. We heard stories about the start of his career where he was uh, addicted to alcohol, how he overcame that and used um, his later years as, as sober yeah. from the 1970s onwards to go on and help other people fighting from addiction. And we also heard from a range of leaders and celebrities, including Sir Elton John, uh, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, who wasn't there, um, David Williams, the British comedian, and so many others. Uh, it was also nice to hear, um, as Rupert Ru Murdoch put it, how there was still this comedic giant who was never, ever stifled by political correctness and yeah. wokery, as we've seen so many. And I think that's one of the things that stands out for me for Barry Humphreys. Like, I, I, I was thinking earlier about what was my earliest memory of him, and I, and I have to say perhaps a, gener a little bit of a generation gap there, but the gladioli the glasses and just as you say that absolute sense of irreverence and toward the end of his career you know really really um, you know resisted resisted the woke wokeification there you go I've invented a word <laughs> of comedy yeah, he did. And look, it was part of the reason that the service was held in Sydney and not his hometown right. of Melbourne, because his family were reportedly very upset uh, with his hometown mm. for taking his treated. name off the That's Barry right. Award, which yeah. was uh, the uh, International uh, Comedy Festival in, in Melbourne. He had uh, the, the Melbourne Comedy Festival. He had a name uh, on his award and yeah. they stripped him of it because of his remarks about transgender people um, and I just think that's incredibly sad and well, that's, that's part of the reason but to their loss is our gain and tonight the Opera House sales will be lit up with the diamante encrusted <laughs> glasses of Dame Edna uh, and you can almost hear her saying goodbye possum. Yeah good night to our favourite possum. <laughs> a little bit of a change of face now. The United States Congress has given the green light to AUKUS nuclear submarines signing off on the security pact by a margin of 310 to 110. This will allow Australia to purchase at least three Virginia-class subs. The Prime Minister hailed the deal as an extraordinary achievement. Caroline, this is huge after the bill being held up now to become legislation and getting getting the, um, the the ink, I guess, of President Joe Biden. Yeah, it just needs his sign-off, Gemma, but it's been a long time in the works. There was a lot of wrangling on Capitol Hill over the, that, but there was, it passed by a majority in the Senate and the Senate um, Democrat majority leader, Chuck Schumer, said that, you know, this was a game-changer and it will help Australia count counter the threat from the Chinese Communist Party. It will mean a fleet, or it should mean a fleet, of nuclear-powered submarines for Australia. And the Prime Minister himself said that he's spoken to more than 100 members of Congress in the US, either in person or over mm. the phone, to try and get this passed. Well, it's a really interesting... Um timing for this agreement because it does sort of put more gravitas to Australia's strategic relationship 
with the US in the same week that the Prime Minister, and as I touched on in my editorial, and Australia as a country voted against the US uh, at the United Nations. And the Prime Minister this week and just the last 24 hours has mm -hmm. said that Hamas cannot be allowed to retain power in Gaza. Take a listen. We want Hamas to be disarmed. Uh, we uh, condemn unequivocally the atrocities that occurred on October 7. We need to plan as well for uh, what occurs uh, after uh, the conflict. Uh, Hamas can have no role in the future governance uh, of, of Gaza and we need to work towards a political solution. Caroline, it seems to me that this is a tremendously conflicted message that the um, federal government and the prime minister are sending in relation to this matter. I don't think you have to be a Middle Eastern expert to understand that uh, Hamas, as has proven in the first ceasefire, will use this time, if it's granted, assuming that it is, I don't think it will be from what I've read, to rearm, recalibrate and, you know, take its sweet time to decide when, not if it violates that second ceasefire. Well, we've had two ceasefires. We had a ceasefire on October 7, which, of course, Hamas broke with the massacres the following day. We had a ceasefire, a temporary pause, which Hamas broke, as you pointed out, by launching suicide bombers into yep. Jerusalem and rockets into the heart of Israel. It's not interested in abiding no. by these ceasefires. It's shown that time and again. And it, the, the timing of this really is curious because Israel, as I understand it from talking to a, serious, a senior member of the IDF this week, is on the cusp of ending its yeah. bombardment mm. of Gaza and moving on to more of the on-ground operations mm. to weed out the militants from the yeah. tunnels. This timing is only going to benefit Hamas in terms of getting uh, gaining yeah. some strength. Emboldening them. And emboldening yeah. them. And I think really the Prime Minister yet again is talking out of both sides of his mouth. Mm. He's calling for a ceasefire mm. with the United Nations and yet he's saying Gaza can't be allowed to govern over... Uh, Hamas can't mm. be allowed to govern over Gaza. I mean, How is that going to happen without de-arming them? Exactly. And I think this is the, the, the other thing that I find is so utterly rude about this situation is if Israel does not eliminate Hamas, who is going to? Well, know, they are yeah. well prepared to do the nation, the world's dirty work for them in terms of ridding the world of this awful terrorist organisation. And I might point out again that the, the federal government prescribed Hamas as a terror organisation in March last year. This thing you can't make sense of if, if you try it, as my late father would say, they're trying to ride one horse and lead another. Yeah, I think there's a, that certainly other countries, Western nations who are supposed allies of Israel have shown they can't really stomach this fight mm. and it, there is an ugly cost to it. But unless leaders like uh, Anthony Albanese can make clear in their statements, mm. which they haven't, that Hamas is responsible for the suffering of its people by using them as human shields, by hiding their infrastructure... Uh, uh, embedded within the civilian population by stopping them from leaving to safe areas until it can make that clear, then really it's it's showing it's awfully one-sided on this issue. Couldn't agree more. Caroline Marcus, thank you for your time. We will see you again very shortly.